On today's video, we will be talking about Rhino 7, the basics of 2D drafting. What we have here today is a kind of quick sketch of a 3D object, probably like a mechanical part, and we'll be using this as an example to draft in uh, Rhino. So to start, I'd go to File, New, and there's these default templates available. You can just use large objects, centimeters in this case. I'm using centimeters just based on what I see in the drawing here, but feel free to use um, the dimension that makes sense for you. So once I'm good with that, I'll hit open. And by default, we have four windows of the different kind of views, top, perspective, front, and right. If you ever want to focus on one, you can just double click. In our case, I do just want to focus on the top view since we're drafting in 2D. And just before we start, just want to make sure that we have Ortho on, OSnap on, and Smart Track. So Ortho kind of restricts your drawing to 90 degrees, 90 or 180. So that'll be helpful in our case. Nothing kind of too organic when it comes to the forms. So that will be helpful. OSnap turns on your various points that you will snap to. So uh, endpoints, midpoints, intersections, make sure that you have these turned on. And again, that's so that when you're drawing lines, you wanna make sure that they match up so that they don't almost touch, but they actually physically meet at each of the points. And then smart track is nice when you're trying to create alignments um, with various lines and points that you've already drawn on the page. So you'll see how that works in a little bit. But to start, the very basic command is polyline. I'm using the default layer. You can double click on this and just rename it if you'd like. So I can call it like polylines solid, let's say. Feel free to name it what you'd like. And then I would click on this button right here. You can also just type in polyline on the command line and that would do the same thing. And then you can decide to click anywhere to start. In my case, I'm going to start by typing in the coordinate zero comma zero. So we'll just start at the origin here. And from there, I will use the dimensions that we find here and um, kind of just go around drawing the basics of that. Now I did do a quick look at this. I think this, some of the dimensions are a bit off. So uh, disclaimer, I think this should be an 80 instead based on this radius. So you'll see what I mean. Uh, so again, we started by clicking on the origin. Now we need to know the distance, right? So I'm gonna type in 12, then hit enter. And then to complete the line, we just need to click in the direction that we're going to draw the line. So I'm going to click to the right. Again, I have ortho on, so it restricts how I can move my cursor. In this case, it's good because we want those perfect 90 degrees. Next, I'm going to type in 40. Again, click to the right. And then 12, enter, click to the right. Again, just the disclaimer, that should be 80. So let's type in 80, enter, and then we'll click downwards. And then for here, we actually drew a bunch of these lines and points. So rather than type in the number, we can actually scroll over and hover on that point. Notice that it turned gray. And then we can bring that down. And now you can see like an alignment, that gray vertical line. That's because of smart track. That uh, combined with your ortho allows you to click and create a line that's perfectly aligned to your previous point. So that kind of makes things quick rather than typing that number. Uh, just a quick tip there. Uh, from there, we know this radius is 20. So type in 20, enter, then we've got to click up. And then next, this distance is 70. So we can type 70, enter, and then we'll click to the left. This radius is 20, so the diameter should be 40. So I'm gonna type 40 in, click that. Again, we can use this alignment. 
and just hover it over that, brought it across. And then the last piece, if we did everything right, we actually don't even need to click on that point. Um, we could just hit close here or C for short. So let's try that. Clicking close, it just completes the loop. Now we have one closed curve added to selection. So the reason why we use polyline is because we wanted one continuous curve rather than a bunch of broken lines, right? So this is kind of nice, kind of if you select it, it selects everything at once. So next, you, uh, we want to add these radiuses. Uh, to do that, we'll use the fillet command. So if you type in fillet, then hit enter, you'll want to determine the radius. In our case, it is 20. Make sure that trim is on. I'll show you what it looks like if trim is not on. So select first curve to fill it, to that, second curve to fill it, that. So you can see that without the trim, I still have this. I would need to go in and trim it um, as a second command. Let's control Z, so we undo that. If we type in fill it again, but turn on trim, now that we click the first curve, second curve, it just automatically does that. So that's kind of an easy way to draft things a little quicker. Next, if you want to redo the same command, um, you can simply right click and then click the first curve, second curve. So we just did that. You know, alternatively, you could have typed in fillet and did it again, but again, it's a quick tip on, you know, using the previous command, you can simply right click. So again, I'll right click this time. Uh, again, the radius is 20, so we'll just do that again, and then right click, do that again. So now that's the basics of the outline of this drawing. Next, we need to draw the circles. So uh, first, I want to figure out like how do we locate them. So I'm going to draw a series of construction lines. So I'll use this layer for that. So I'm just going to double click this, rename this to construction lines, make sure it's selected here by the check mark. So that means I'm drawing on this layer. And then I'm going to just make sure that they're aligned, kind of find the center points here. So I'm going to click on polyline, make sure the mid point uh, O snap is on, checked off. So that will allow you to snap to the midpoint here. Hit enter and then I'll right click, hit the midpoint here, enter. And then it's just these two ends, enter. So that's good. Next, we want to find the center of these two circles. So if you divide 34 in half, that's 17 from this middle line, right? Then the radius is 5. So 17 plus 5 will bring us to the midpoint, so that's 22. So if we hit offset, we'll select this line. And then we want the distance to be 22. Hit enter. So we'll click up. So that's like the center point of that first hole. And then if we right click to offset again, click this and click down, that will be the other center. Next, we can draw the holes. So if we click back to polylines, make sure that we've checked that off. So we're drawing in that layer. Then we can use the circle command. Center of the circle, we've found it now. So click on that. Radius is 5. So we type in 5, hit enter. We're good. Right click, find the center point. If you can't find the center point, make sure that you have the intersection on. It'll find the intersection of two polylines. That will allow you to grab this. And then again, we'll hit five, enter. Then we'll draw the third hole. It will be at the intersection of these two lines. And it has a six radius. So we type in six, hit enter. All right, and then lastly, we have these hidden lines. I'll just draw, I'll use this layer. I'll rename it to hidden lines. And then I will draw that using the polyline tool again. Hit, kind of click the two points. I'm going to offset it 
to create that. Our set. Uh, this time it's 12. Enter, click across, and then I'll right click to offset again. This time it's 40. So I'll type in 40, and then select the curve of this one, and then I'm going to click to the right. So it's perfect. And then last, we just need these end bits. I'll draw a line here, right to here, enter, and I click that. When you have overlapping lines, it kind of scrolls through the various uh, lines that you could choose from. In this case, it's the purple line that's hidden lines. Again, I'll hit offset. And then I want to offset this by seven. So distance will be seven, enter. Now I can delete that line. It's still selected, so I'll hit delete. And then let's just copy this over. So I've selected that line, typed in copy. You need to choose the point to copy from. So I'll click that corner, click to this corner, and then I'll hit escape to get out there. So now we have two of the lines. If we kind of select both, or kind of highlight from top left to bottom right, make sure you capture everything. Then I can use mirror. Using the construction line here as the mirror plane, I click on one side, click on the other side, and then I have all the lines drawn. So I'll just hide the construction lines so we can get those to disappear. And then the last piece is the line type. We can switch this to hidden line so if I scroll in, these should be dashed lines. Let's try maybe dashed. Maybe that'll be a little clearer. I think these would normally print as dashed. We can go over how that will look in a, in a later video, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of teach you how to set up a layout and print it so that you can have different line types and different uh, line um, weights as well. So I hope you liked this video. If you got some value out of it, please like the video. And for future videos on Rhino, and 3D modeling, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified when there's a new video that we shoot. Thanks everyone.